Good evening, my name is John Kelly. I'm the principal here in Chagas, Ballyhays College, County Cavan. And we have our open day this evening, and you're very welcome to that. Normally you would be here and you'd be shaking your hand, but with COVID-19 restrictions, that's not happening today. So we're very happy that you're with us. Over the course of the hour, you're going to be joined by our colleagues from the farm that explains what goes on on our college and the various courses and how we engage with the animals here. And then during that hour, we will also be in studio to engage with you in any questions that you have on our courses. And welcome here to a very clammy, hot and thundery County Cavan in workshop three where we have our studio set up this evening. I'm joined by colleagues who will introduce themselves shortly, but just a little bit about myself. I'm the principal here for seven years. I've been involved in Chagas education for almost 20 years, but I suppose most importantly from my job's perspective, I've been involved in agriculture all my life. And we're passionate about agriculture here. I'm sure you're tuning in tonight uh, and are the same as me. All you want to do is talk about agriculture. We'll come to Ballyhays, we have our farm, we have like-minded people, and it's a great opportunity to further your education coming to Agriculture College. I just now would like to ask our, my colleagues on my left to introduce themselves. Hi, John. Uh, my name is Mary McGlynn, and I'm a teacher here in the college. I coordinate the Advanced Dry Stock course, and I'm also the Sheep Enterprise Leader. I'm originally from a dairy farm in County Offaly. So like yourself, I've grown up my whole life in Falton farming, and I actually have my own sheep farm here in Cavan. Very good. And you're a long time in Cavan at this stage? I'm 20 years in Cavan. Haven't quite got the accent yet, no. but 20 years, but um, working on it. <laughs> you're very good, very good. Thank you, Mary. And Thanks, John. Uh, my name is John Doherty. I'm originally from Donegal, up the same part of the world as yourself. Uh, I'm here 20 years myself. Um, I teach dairying and I coordinate the level six dairy course. Um, did agriculture in UCD, and after that, I did a PhD in dairying in Hillsborough. Yes, and we're going to talk about our farm a, a, a lot tonight because it's important to us. Uh, but you've done your PhD in Hillsborough, and that's only over the road from us here. But the dairy farm in there is, have you noticed the differences between what we do here? and what they do there, the type of systems that they have? There's a huge difference, John. Um, I suppose traditionally the northern uh, farmers, they like the big Holstein cows. Um, big cows needed big feeding. So high input systems, high meal feeding, um, cabin cows most of the year round compared to the systems down here, which is probably more grass-based and probably a lower cost of production trying to maximize milk from grazed grass. Yeah. And of course, I suppose that it's history that determined what direction they took. But yes, we'll cover what we do here uh, at, at length later on tonight. And finally. Thanks, John. Uh, my name is John McIlvany. I'm the mechanization teacher here in the college. I um, suppose I'm from County Longford and um, from a beef farm, but grew up with agricultural machinery all my life. Um, worked in the UK, taught agriculture and engineering over there. And then back here in Bally Hills for the last five, six years. Okay, so really enjoying it. Um, just started up a mechanization course last year, so just looking now to move into the second year of it. So really good progress to date. And like with the dairy, we'll, we'll talk about that later on tonight. And you're very important to me today and, and the team, the machinery team here getting set up. Yeah, no, we started at 8 o'clock this morning. Now we moved in all the machinery. So I'm at home now with this all here behind me. Yes. Uh, Mary wanted to bring in a few sheep, but yes. um, we had to leave them out. No, we were afraid they'd make too, too much noise. Yeah. Thanks, John. And we're also joined later by Anne Berler, Access Officer here, to talk about student support and how to apply as well. So the whole purpose of this evening, is, over the next hour, is to give you the opportunity to ask us questions. So the message that we want to get out in Chagas is that our colleges are open for business, as usual. We're starting in September as usual. Obviously, our public health guidelines are going to decide a lot of how we do things, and a lot of the questions with the detail of that we won't be able to answer until much closer to the time. But it's very important that if you're considering coming to Ag College, that get your applications in, and we will communicate with you over the next few weeks. Also tonight, there's a big focus on, from our perspective, to show you our farm, and we've done that in all our Chagas Colleges. Our farms are really important to us. Uh, we're doing vocational courses here. It's all about working with your hands, driving machines, handling sheep, working with cows. And that's what we want to teach you. 
It's something that you enjoy, and that's what we want to show you here in the college. So it's very important that we show you that as part of our open virtual open day today. So basically, the next what we want to talk about is the different types of courses that we do here. And Mary, maybe you just might share that with us. There's different ways to study agriculture. There in is Valley indeed. And um, we have a range of options for applying. There is the distance and part-time option which is eligible to over 23 year olds and the distance course is for award holders. And then there's our full-time level five day course, which leads on to either John John's course, the advanced machinery, Dr. John's course, the advanced, me um, sorry, the advanced mechanization and Dr. John's advanced dairy or my advanced dry stock course. And um, we also have the option of the part-time pig and poultry course, which of course for this area here is hugely important. And we've had a lot of interest continuously in those because they're enterprises that are very important in Cavan and Monaghan. Mm -hmm. And we've noticed and we do provide those courses. So people can apply to do a poultry course here. We have staff here that specialize in pigs and poultry. So that's important to mention those. And again, certainly feel free to ask any questions on those courses if that's what you're interested in. Okay, and Mary, you meant you were actually involved in the distance education here when, mm -hmm. you, when you started in Valley Hills first. That was my, one of my original teaching roles here was on the distance education course. Yeah. And it was very interesting to, to teach because they, they, you were teaching maybe one group every month and their, their interest and their focus was phenomenal. They were very focused on getting their, their award. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and it, it is, it's as big a as part of our business, part-time mm -hmm. and distance courses as our full-time courses. Mm -hmm. We're going to start our, our next video shortly. And that's uh, from the farm. And uh, we've just watched Donald Patton now, who's going to talk about our dairy enterprise. Uh, Tragus Valley Hayes Dairy Enterprise is a compact spring calf and herd. Uh, the main focus here is the use of grazed grass in the cow's diet and producing high quality milk uh, at low cost. Uh, this ensures a profitable, sustainable system for the college enterprise. Uh, the herd consists of 110 cows um, grazing 40 hectares of milk and block. Uh, the herd is a mixture of pure Frisian and also crossbred cows. Breeding is focused on fertile cows with high uh, milk value. Our cows must also have good function, including the ability to walk uh, to pasture. We start breeding here in early May each year, which results in a calving date of early February. Uh, we usually calve half the herd in around 20 days and calve 80% in six weeks. Uh, all cows are calved in 11 weeks. This ensures that we match the herd's uh, dietary requirements to our grass growth curve. While the herd is used for research and advisory, it's also vital for students in the college. Um, first year students complete skills training with cows and their young stock. Um, including calf rearing. Second year students are using technology that we develop here in their studies, including grass measuring and budgeting. Um, second year dairy students complete weekly grass walks with their dairy teacher, enter this into the grass software, which is called Pasture Base, and discuss the decision making with myself and Barry and the rest of the dairy team. Uh, this gives them confidence to use this technology when they return to the home farm. Okay, welcome back. As you can see, lots of our farm here is used for research and Donald Pat is one of the research officers here and he's very involved in, in running the farm. John, just a question for you, uh, yeah. talking about the dairy here. The, the, what's the spring been like this year? Well, it's been the same all over. A really good three months. Uh, exceptionally good um, settled weather, um, quite dry, uh, which has been very, very useful. Cows got out in spring early, um, thankfully stayed out. Um, grazing conditions has been superb and cows eating um, dry, dry feed, dry grass, sun on their backs and maybe an issue at the minute with, uh, with soil moisture deficits but overall uh, superb spring. Yes and, and we've been very busy the last few weeks with breeding and can you tell us a little bit about the breeding? This, yes, this year? Sure, um, the breeding season they're six weeks in, we usually start here around the first days of uh, May and they're six weeks in and it's going really, really well. Uh, weather has been very, very exceptional, um, lending itself to good submission rates and getting cows on heat and seeing them on heat. Um, I suppose this year, a slight change in other years that they're, they're using sex semen um, to try and sort of minimize um, the production of excess and surplus male bull calves. Um, and that seems to be working quite well. Uh, okay, very good. Very good. And we've seen the farm there. And just a quick question, Murray, just uh, 
the involvement of the farm at this stage, mm -hmm. just to stress that it is a pivotal in all our courses here. Oh, absolutely. And it's hugely important having the farm on our doorstep. I'm teaching for 20 years and eight of those years I've spent here in Ballyhays. And the value of having that farm there and to be able to bring that back into the classroom. And when you go out on practicals in smaller groups with students, the value of that, it's phenomenal. And the, the benefits students get from the hands-on, actually our farm here is a fully commercial farm. And they, whatever we are doing out in the farm comes back into the classroom and it's of huge value. And John, the students, the, both our level five, level six students, they will be out in the milking parlor as part of their course. Well, very much so. Um, any student that comes in and decides to opt for the, the dairying uh, husbandry in level five, um, they all learn to milk. Some of them are quite experienced, they've cows at home. And we'd actually uh, encourage students that don't milk at home um, that it's worth something, it's certainly worth doing. And it's a good life skill. And uh, we've had students who have learned to milk and it opens up opportunities for weekend work and uh, a way of uh, supplementing their wages and money at the weekends and the summer yeah. holidays is a good skill to have. And the same question, John, for you, like we've had the students out, and in your case, it's more the second years have been out. Yeah, the, the second farm. years, I guess, um, very involved, John. Um, last year we done a trial actually with the first or with the second years. They compared a conventional plough based system for reseeding grassland to direct drilling. So they got very involved. They also involved in diet feeding, low emission slurry spreading, and they'll even calibrate the machines for the farm, which we feel is important. So they're not just operators, they know how to repair and calibrate the machines. Okay, thanks John. So we're going to move on now to a, a video again. And basically this time we want to have a, a see what our students think of the course. And we're joined with one of our past students who's going to say a short piece about what he done here. I chose to study agriculture with Chagas to further my education in the agricultural sector, more so in the dairy industry. I want to learn more about the technical efficiencies and the theory side of dairy farming in the 21st century. Um, enjoying the course so far, uh, learning all the different aspects of dairy farming, especially grassland management, farm business planning, breeding and fertility, and labor management. I find this staff very helpful and very informative. Chagas provide excellent facilities for learning. I would highly recommend the course to any person looking to gain an education in agriculture. With Chagas, students are educated on the latest cutting edge technologies and safe farm practices, and are well prepared for a career in farming. Okay, and welcome back. I'm just going to talk now about the, uh, the course a little bit. And the first question, John, to you. So the, the, the dairying, if people want to come to Ballyhays and study dairying, uh, where do they start off? What do they do? Well, the first thing is on the first day, they have to decide they want to do dairying. So that's the first. They have, they have an option when they come in on the first day. They can do dairying and beef, or they can opt to basically do dry stock, which is beef. And sheep. So on the first day, um, I suppose we are encouraging them maybe to do the dairying if they're of interest. If they don't have cows at home, as we said previously, I'd be encouraging um, give the dairying a go. Yeah, they'll enjoy it. Looking cows is nice. Yeah, and they're on the, the level five then for for how long? The program will start in September. There'll be eight weeks of a placement built into it, and uh, they finish finish up uh, the following May, and then summer, and then they come back in September to pursue their level six. Okay, and just tell us a little bit about the level six. That's the second year of being in Ballyhays. Yeah, the second, the second year uh, of the full-time program. And they come in in September, and they're in class for a portion of it. Um, they'll do certain amount of practicals, quite a lot of um, more in-depth material that they would have covered in level five. So we build upon the fundamentals we do in level five. So we build into uh, financial management, nutrition, um, slightly more advanced dairy husbandry and, and a whole range of extras. And it usually culminates in the springtime with a 16 week uh, placement. Okay, we may come back to placement. I, one of the things Michael was doing in that video was measuring grass. And yes. can you tell me about that and what the students do with that? Um, I think measuring the grass is fundamentally important, I think for any dairy farmer going forward and even for the more pro progressive beef farmers. Um, it's difficult to get farmers to measure grass, um, but it's, it's one of the core fundamental pillars of um, dairying going forward is you must be able to measure it, you must be able to manage it, 
and um, it has to be done. So every student um, receives excellent training here uh, with Donal and other people at the Dairy Research Herd and they learn it from the best and um, they're experts uh, leaving here. They walk uh, every week with two teachers split into two groups and they're measuring the, the grass and doing the covers on the farm every week. They're coming in and putting the results into pasture base as uh, Don would have explained on the video and they would be put on the spot um, what decisions will you make? This is your herd of cows. Yeah. You make the decisions for the coming week. Yeah. And uh, it's very hands-on and it's, it's not made up. It's real-life cows, real-life decisions. And they, they learn a huge amount. Okay, okay. And we'll just move on. I mentioned progression. What, what do our level six students on the dairy course typically progress to? The level six is a very good starting point, I suppose, the first. I suppose the first starting point is that they qualify as the greens for the green cert. I think yeah. that's the aim of probably a lot of students coming in here. Um, for a certain proportion of them, probably the green cert is, is more than satisfactory for them and that's, that's their target. But for students who would like to uh, progress a little further, um, I suppose some of them will go back home with the green cert and they're happy. Some of them might like to take it a step further and go on and do a level seven, which is the professional farm managers course. Um, and that does open up options, particularly for students who are not from a farming background, and it could open up options for being a manager or possibly getting into one of the, the range of sort of shared farming and options for um, partnerships and things that's opening up in the recent years. Some of them will progress on the third level, which is really, really encouraging. Um, so we have very, very strong links with Dundalk IT. Yeah. And um, it's, it's great to see some students who do go into second or third year in Dundalk and uh, they graduate with a degree and, uh, and it's nice to see some of them actually come back here as students, came back uh, as teachers, yes, very as students good. of our own and yeah. we joined them as uh, fellow colleagues and okay. it's great to see. Yeah, thanks for that, John. Yeah. Okay, so we have our first question, before, I'm just going to, Mary, maybe you might answer this, it's from Deirdre. Will you be fully operational for students in September, i.e. face-to-face classes and practicals and halls of residence open? So maybe I'll help well, you with some of those. But I know Anne later will probably touch on the halls of residence and that will be covered in that. I suppose, look, at we, we are working under government guidance and we'll, we'll be instructed as to what we can and can't do when the time comes. We envisage that our college will be fully open. Um, I suppose one of the, the advantages that we have is that our practicals outdoors are in very small groups to begin with. So that would, would, would be a very itself. strong point for us. We do have some large teaching facilities where social distancing would be quite possible. Yes. So that w we, we plan to incorporate all of that. Yeah, so I, I mean, we've already mm -hmm. used Zoom. You've been using mm -hmm. Zoom quite extensively with the students mm -hmm. after we went into the lockdown. Mm -hmm. that, that's worked. And the students have engaged fantastically with Zoom. They're, yes. they're probably more IT experts than any of us. Yes, mm -hmm. and I think that's an important message because we will have to continue to use Zoom for, for our classes and the students have been taught remotely then access to a computer or a good quality handheld device, internet, it's going to be important. And I suppose it's, it's important to get that message across tonight mm -hmm. that if you're going, to, our teachers here are going to be engaging with you via Zoom, then you'll need to have that, that connectivity. Mm -hmm. So we'll move on to our next video mm -hmm. shortly. Um, and it's going to be talking about the dry stock. So um, thanks for that, John. And our next video is on our beef enterprise. Yeah, my name is uh, Liam McQueenie. Uh, I'm a teacher and the enterprise uh, leader for the beef enterprise here in uh, Ballyhays College. Uh, the suckler enterprise is a 60 cow uh, suckler herd with all progeny brought through to beef. Uh, look at, I suppose, the primary objective of the herd is to support the education program here in the college. Um, the herd is a spring calving herd, uh, starting to calve in mid February, and that takes, takes place over a 12 week period. Uh, all first year students uh, participate in a broad range of skills uh, associated with the running of the, of the beef enterprise. Yeah, so look, the cow type is mainly a continental cross uh, with all replacements sourced from within the herd. Uh, the type of quality animal we produce here, I suppose, is, is very relevant to the area. The majority of our students um, are coming from farms which are producing this type of animal, I suppose, for the live market. Uh, one of the second year dry stock students' key involvement uh, in the enterprise is in breeding and interpret interpreting 
ICBF data. Uh, we use the maternal index, I suppose, as a tool, uh, along with the history of the dam when selecting heifers to keep for replacement, uh, which are all AI bred. So students are taught uh, the latest technologies, and this is put into practice across the enterprise, including a big emphasis on grassland management uh, to help maximise the live weight gain from grass. With many, uh, many of our beef heifers and steers, uh, we, we can kill them here off grass before the second winter. Excellent genetics, I suppose, as well, and early turnout, getting cattle out to grass early, they also play an important role in achieving this sort of performance. Half of our male calves are finished as under 16 month bulls. Um, I suppose this was in response to a huge interest from students in bull beef systems. Uh, we found this very beneficial from an education point of view, uh, covering the management factors and look at I suppose the risks associated uh, with bull beef um, production systems with our students. So looking for similar reasons, I suppose, we're after developing a dairy calf to beef. And that again, I suppose, is in response to the issue with these dairy calf, uh, dairy calf or beef calves coming from the dairy herd. And uh, our first year students, I suppose, they focus more so on the skills, whereas our second year students, they'll focus more on the management of the enterprise. And uh, we feel, I suppose, this prepares them very well uh, for their farm placement and, of course, then for their future career in farming. Welcome back. And Liam was standing on one of our many, many drumlins uh, that we have on the college farm. Very, very scenic, beautiful river on Lee flowing through the college. It goes the whole way to Ballyshannon in Donegal. Uh, but coming from Donegal and having lived in Kilkenny and lived in Cork, very, very different challenge when it comes to farming drumlins compared to what I'm used to. Maybe, John, you might mention from a machinery perspective, people only think they've worked in hills. Yeah, like they, suppose, they've worked in a drumlin. <laughs> I suppose you say yourself, John, you came from Kilkenny. Um, I came from teaching ag engineering in, um, over in the UK, um, massive flat plains, and then come back to Ballyhays. And if someone asks me, what's the biggest change in teaching in the UK and teaching in Ballyhays, it's the, it's the lie of the land, really. Um, people will say, if you can drive a tractor in Ballyhays, you can drive a tractor anywhere. Okay? So even doing things like um, fertilizer spreading, spreading slurry, tray testing, GPS. It is a challenge. If you can learn here, you can do it anywhere. Yeah, but we've 500 acres of drumlands yeah. and it's fabulous soil mm. and brilliant. Oh, grass. even to work the land like we done ploughing last year with students, like top quality land grows great grass. Yes. But um, no, it is a challenge um, just operating machinery, but it's a good challenge. Students learn a lot. Yeah, thanks, John. And Mary, the, the beef, how's the beef, how's the breeding gone this year? Yeah, it's been a great year for us, similar to the dairy. It's been a very, very good spring. There was no issues with turnout. Um, once the cows calves were pretty much out straight away. They've just finished three weeks of AI in, and now the stock bulls are out and probably till around the first week in July. And we're going to talk about the dry stock very shortly in more detail after we've watched the, the sheep video. But, but they're equal components. So Liam's role in the dry stock uh, education mm -hmm. in the college here, it's, it's as, as important as Absolutely. As um, there's a 50-50 role in the advanced dry stock course between the beef and sheep um, elements in the programme. And we would see that in our students that come in. A lot of them would be from mixed farms where both beef and sheep are farmed at home. What sort of work do the students, it's a question here from, mm -hmm. uh, that we have, what sort of work do the students do in the farm? The level five students in the first year would be very involved in the actual work on the farm. We try as much as possible in their practicals to build that into the actual work on the farm. So for example, if it was, I don't know, clostridial in vaccination and the students would be involved, it would be part of their practical injecting our dosing again, we try to build it in. Equally, our students, level five students are terribly important at early lambing and they play a critical role. They actually lamb all night and day at the early lambing. Yeah, I have a question here, not to do with the enterprise from Alan. Have you any concerns this year with the predicted leave insert results and what does that affect people applying for courses and with us? I don't think it will have a huge impact at all. And we have our own application procedure that Anne will be looking at later. Um, I don't think it will, it will have a huge impact on our course. Okay, okay. So uh, we're going to go now to our, our next enterprise video and that's with Mary from, from the Sheep Enterprise earlier in the year. My name is Mary McLean and I'm Sheep Enterprise Leader here at Chagas Valley Hayes College. The principal objective of our college Sheep Enterprise is to complement and support our students' learning. We operate an early and mid-season lambing system and we, we achieve a relatively high stocking rate of 10 yos per hectare. Our early yos are sponged in August to lamb down in early January. The mid-season flock lamb from the start of March onwards. 
Our ewes here achieve, on average, a scanning rate of close to two lambs per yoke put to the ram. Over 75% of our mid-season lambs are finished off grass by the end of September each year. All our replacement stock are homebred with a well-planned approach to the selection of suitable replacements. Here in Ballyhay, students play a very proactive role in the sheep enterprise. As part of sheep production module, students participate in different practical hands-on skills such as dosing, lambing and hoof care. As far as possible, these skills are incorporated into the farm enterprise, so students are actively involved in the day-to-day -day running of the enterprise. Our first-year students play a very active role in the early lambing, engaging in skills such as identifying signs of lambing and assisting in lambing. I also deliver the theory aspect of the sheep production module in the college, and I draw on the college sheep enterprise for a lot of the material that I use in the classroom. Second year students are actively involved in the management of the enterprise, detailing day-to-day -day tasks that are carried out by the first year students. Okay, welcome back. Just a reminder that the Q&A function is on Zoom at the bottom of your screen, and please feel free to ask any questions. Before we go on and talk about the, the sheep enterprise to Murray, I have just a quick question from James. Murray, do you receive the green cert after first year level five, or do you have to do the level six course? Yes, you have to do the full level six course. So that's the advanced course um, of the level six to get the green cert. Okay, thanks for that. Mm -hmm. So we watched the, the sheep video there, and again, what I hope came across was the fact that the students in that video and a lot of the scenes while you were talking, Maybe just go through that. And Absolutely. We try as much as possible to have the students involved in the enterprise. I think it's um, the best way to learn is to learn seasonal so is that they may be going home and practicing the same skills as that they've just gone through in Ballyhays. And it gives them a chance to go home and maybe look at maybe improving practices at home. And you can see there in the video as well that our advanced students, while they're not as much hands on, they're involved maybe in a supervisory role at Lamming or they're involved in sort of the management at level six level. Okay, very good. A uh, little bit in the enterprise, Mary. The, the, um, you were standing again on top of a, a very steep mm -hmm. hill on the farm there. Um, we've done a nice bit with receding. Maybe you tell us we about have, what we've done. Um, over the past number of maybe five years that I've been enterprise leader on the sheep unit, we have every year receded maybe five to seven hectares. And you can really see the benefit coming through, especially in, in the spring at turnout. You can, there's the, the grass is there and it, it, it's, um, it's very beneficial at that stage for the, the flock. And you mentioned earlier about the level five students involvement in lambing. We've split our flock here intentionally for the students. We purposely go with an easy or an early lambing so is that every student gets an opportunity here to lamb, to maybe tube feed lambs, all of the different skills associated with lambing prior to going on placement. And that early flock is particularly beneficial to, Absolutely. to the level five. Absolutely. It's, it's here when the students are here. Okay, mm -hmm. and what about the level six students, the second year students, and their involvement? Their, their involvement, as I said, is probably more at um, a management level, in that we, we try to get them to supervise the, the level five students at Lamming, and that the, the idea of that is that it may help them in their role as potential farm managers. And they're looking more maybe at the financial end, looking at cost control measures, and looking at ways of making the, the enterprise more efficient. Okay. So the students that come here to study dry stock at level five, they come from all over, don't they? Yeah, all over. We have a big region from Donegal right down to, to Leitrim over to Westmeath. So there's a big spread of our students. And there's also a big spread in, in what they're farming at home. And th that really helps us because we really encourage students to learn from each other as well here. So there's a lot of peer-to-peer -peer learning. And another element that we really try to bring into the course is visits to benchmark farmers so that they get an opportunity to see farms outside of Ballyhays as well that are doing different things. Yeah, and Liam mentioned in this video about mm -hmm. the importance of the, the, the suckler herd that we have here, mm -hmm. the particular breeds that we have. Mm -hmm. and that's very common again to... Again, it's very, very important for, for this region. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the, to go, go to the sheep and the type of students that we come, they come from a, a wide range yeah. of different types of sheep production systems as We'd well. We have students as far up as Malin Head that yes. are hill, hill flocks, heads. yeah. Yes. So it's in, in Robert Cooley Peninsula. And then in between, we'd have a lot of sheep farmers from County Meath who'd come up 
Yes, with lowland flocks mm-hmm. as well. So you have to cater, mm-hmm. you have the enterprise to cater to, to all their needs. And, and the students actually learn a lot from each other as yes. well. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the farm as well, we've been working on a biodiversity mm-hmm. and could you give you a few of the things that we've been at? Yeah, we've, we've um, put a lot of work into it, the biodiversity on our farm and looking at a sustainable farming systems. And one of the major focuses we've had is on hedgerow rejuvenation. And I think we've planted, is it up to two kilometers? This year. Of this yes. year alone yes. of hedges. And then we have built in coppicing and um, improving the existing hedges that are there. And it's particularly for a sheep farm of critical importance. If you're turning lambs out in early March and look at good hedge is as good as a shed to a yes. flock of sheep. So we're big focus on that. Yeah. And that's something like with an, as a new government comes in, there's mm-hmm. no doubt that we have to have an increased focus on, yeah. on protecting our water courses, mm-hmm. looking at our carbon emissions mm-hmm. and efficiency is a, is a key driver and of that. Especially here, as yourself and John referred to in our drumlands, we would have a lot of water running off the hills and we have to be very so. careful in our water course management mm-hmm. and with the Anne Lee runs right through our farm. Okay, the students that come to study dry stock, so we've mentioned beef, sheep, and the sort of backgrounds mm-hmm. they come from. So they pick, as John said earlier, they pick to pick sheep mm-hmm. in level five. Mm-hmm. Again, what's their t- what's, what do they do from a dry stock perspective? I suppose um, the initial thing that the, the focus would be on the green cert itself, and a lot of our students will be going home to farm, maybe in a, in a part-time capacity. Um, there's also, though, the potential to look at farm manager, um, I know some of our past students would have gone on to work for feed companies and feed mills as reps. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Right, so um, just I'll have a quick look to see if there's any questions. There's actually one here in the enterprise. Which breeds of rams did we use this year? Yeah, look, we'd, we'd use a range of rams, again, to, get, to um, give students an exposure to different breeds. Different breeds will have different merits and different uses. Our range would be Texas, Suffolk, Charley, Belle Claire. You know, because every breed will have its own characteristics and its own strong points. Yeah, so we come up now, it'll be August, it'll get... Yep, we'll start the, sponge in, in August. For the uh, early flock. Yeah. For the early flock, yeah. Okay, and then second year, the students, they, they decide, a big proportion of our students here mm-hmm. will, will pick the dry stock option mm-hmm. for second year. Yeah. You can talk to me about that. Up to 50% of our applicants would go on to study the advanced dry stock course. And quite similar to Dr. John has already listed out the modules you know, there would be nutrition would be in there. And um, we have our beef and sheep modules. We also have a big focus on sustainable farming in the environment and making sure that all of the modules have an incorporation of sustainability within it. And um, also farm planning and being able to look at cost measures on a farm, looking at interpreting any profit monitor would be important. Okay. They do get an opportunity to do a full farm plan. Okay. So again, just a, a question here on the distance so it's from Kieran so he wants to talk about the distance course for award holders and again I go back to you Mary because you were involved in teaching that here in the past mm-hmm. and when you were involved if you talked how the course was run yes at the time um, the way it was run was that it was over an 18 month period and students came here I think it was one Friday a month over 18 months and they would have done their practicals here and then they would have done their exams maybe over three different separate blocks of exams. Yes, okay. And uh, the distance course, we will start another distance course towards the end of the year. And anybody that has, wants to inquire about that, just to contact myself here, uh, our Alistair, one of our teachers, looks after that course. And we plan to start how the course will run with new restrictions. will be broadly similar. We bring students into the college to do practicals, uh, but then we'll deliver some any of the material that we can deliver remotely via Zoom, that's what we'll do. And to get on with the course that are, is ongoing here at the minute, we've been doing exams remotely and doing contact with the students via Zoom. But as soon as the college opens again, there is practical skills that, that we have to bring students back to do. So in the, in, the, in the case of our next distance course, now is the time to make inquiries about it. Uh, and as it's gone over the course of two years, um, it's slightly longer than, than it was when Mary was teaching it. So that's, that's our plan on that course. So we're going to move on. Uh, thanks, Mary, for that. Uh, we'll go on to our next section. And for this, uh, we have a video on our mechanization. And John's going to talk about a video we made earlier in the week. Hi, everyone. My name is John McIlvanny, and I'm one of the college machinery teachers and course coordinator for the Level 6 Advanced Mechanization course at Ballyhays Agricultural College. 
The Level 6 Advanced Mechanisation course is new within Ballyhays College with our current cohort of mechanisation students and 16-week work practice with agricultural dealership and contractors. This course at Ballyhays brings with it a strong focus on grass and machinery with students undertaking practical tasks such as reseeding, slurry and fertiliser application. In order to make sure that our graduates meet the demands of future employers, we place a strong emphasis on the application of modern technology within the course. Students are trained in the use of tractor GPS guidance technology, in addition to computer-based tractor diagnostics. Limiting numbers on the course allows us to work in small groups while carrying out workshop-based practicals, such as welding and machinery maintenance. All students as part of the farm equipment fabrication module must design an artifact using CAD and actually fabricate this piece of equipment. Our students this year design different styles of workbench, each with their own personal touch. These benches were then taken home by the students to be put to good use in their home farm or workshop. The students undertaking the mechanisation course will develop a strong link with our 450-acre Ballyhays College farm. Here, mechanisation students are relied upon for daily tasks such as diet feeding, slurry and fertiliser application. In order to carry out this work, the students are equipped with a range of modern tractors. While operating this equipment is important, the mechanisation students never shy away from a repair or maintenance task to be completed on the farm's equipment. This course is approximately 50% classroom and 50% practical based. Students complain, complete a range of practical field workshop based assessments in addition to their theory exams. On successful completion of this training, not only will our students have gained the Green Star qualification, they will also have a solid foundation in agricultural mechanisation. I hope to see this year's prospective students um, choose further studies of perhaps level 8 agricultural engineering or maybe follow a more practical route in either agricultural mechanics apprenticeship or develop their own contracting business. Welcome back. And we're now joined by our access and house manager here, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hey, John. And my role is my name. And my role here is house manager and student welfare, with the emphasis on student welfare. I try to maintain or maintain, I do my best, to make sure that they enjoy their, their time with us and that they get as much out of the year as what they hope it will bring them. Okay. And the one thing I've noticed over the years, John, about the students is it's great camaraderie built up with them. And they seem to have a friendship that's totally alien to the school situation. That friendship seems to last quite a number of years because even in your, your own time, John, we've had a few um, anniversaries our um, reunions, yeah. if you like to call them that, 25, 30, 50. Yeah. And they still remember the friendships that they built up. And it's great to hear the stories going back them number of years. Yeah. So yes, I, we, do, we are passionate about the, the welfare of our students and make sure that they enjoy the year here. I think that's an important point, Dan. We've a, we have a long track record of, of delivering agricultural edu education, over 110 years, in fact. And we have so many people that come back and talk positively about their, their time here. There's particularly the people that lived here, I, I would add as well, people that have lived on site, made great friends. I think the longer you're involved in education, that's for sure, you start right? to see I'm, the dads I'm, and the mums yes. and the, the uncles uh, and their kids coming in here and Over saying, oh, 30, I remember you. 30-something years here and I, I'm beginning to see uh, the sons of, of uh, chaps that was here in the early years, sons and nephews and whatnot. I just haven't seen the grandfathers yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll be back shortly, Anne. Okay, John, so we just watched the video there um, with you talking about machinery. And we have a couple of questions before we, we get into uh, some of the specific questions about what we do here. So the first one here is, can you choose to do machinery in first year or do you have to wait to second year? Um, as I said earlier, John, um, you do machinery at um, level five and level six. Okay, so in first year, you'll cover modules such as chemical fertilizer application, workshop skills, safe use of pesticides. And that's important, even that module, safe use of pesticides is important because that brings you on then, in your second year then, you get your professional user number. So you can actually go and apply pesticides legally. Okay, so it is an important module. So then once first year's over then, you decide after first year, do you go and do mechanization, advanced dairy, or advanced dry stock. So really and truly, it's a gradual process from the start in first year, there's machinery involved to the end of second year. Okay, okay. And we had another question there about driver's license. So it's been, 
the whole thing is shut down with restrictions and the lockdown. People haven't been able to apply for learner permits. Yeah, I think this. A, yeah. I think this year, John. I think once you come in in September, we we'll leave it till then, and we can sort it out. Forever. If there's a problem, we can sort it free in September. Yeah. But don't don't let that worry you. That yes. wouldn't. That's not a deciding factor. Yeah. So we apply and and don't worry. Well, obviously, if you can't do something, you can't do it because of restrictions. As soon as it opens up, we'll be able to. Uh, work with you at that stage to get your, your learner permits. It is important, I add, to operate machinery here, you do have to have your, your learner permit because yeah. machinery is such an important part. But if you can't apply it, you can't apply. Um, we, we cross that bridge later in the year once the whole thing frees up again. Okay, John, so the, one of the things I noticed in that video was a, a, a drone footage. Can maybe talk about that? Because it was actually students operating that machinery. Yeah, we actually, um, I mentioned earlier, we'd done our um, direct drilling and our plow-based reseeding last year. It was actually the first week the students arrived. Um, we got a new drone. Um, we'd done the pilot training for it. So, and we actually brought the drone out with the students. So as well as operating, say, um, this cultivator, like this is behind me, we had a new plow out with the students. We actually put the drone up and took footage. You might have seen it on the video earlier on. And the students actually got the opportunity to fly the drone, okay? So it's not something they get to do every day. So we try on the course, look at, we try and introduce as much technology as we can, um, be it drone use, GPS use, diagnostics, okay? So we try and keep up to date with technology. Yeah, and that's important that because our students that, that come here and specifically to study mechanization, what are they likely to be doing when they're finished two years? They have their green cert in their pocket. And that's, and yeah, that's, a good, that's a good question, John. Um, look, at the more to myself, there's a wide range of options, okay? The, a lot of them, my lads, they're gone on placement, they're gone into dealerships, okay? They might decide, right, we've got a good basic knowledge of mechanization in Valley Hayes, might actually go on and do an apprenticeship. Okay, another option will be a lot of them are from contractors at home, so they might look to take over the family contracting business, or even um, like myself, go on say and do a degree in ag engineering. You got courses in Palace Kenry, Trilly IT, GMIT, or even go abroad. Okay, go over to the UK, do ag engineering, work demonstration, service engineers, and um, product research. So there's a wide range of options. But yeah. this is a very good grounding for students that want to get involved in mechanization. When we talk about teaching students machinery and mechanization in County Cavan, what, do we have a focus that other colleges mightn't have? Um, probably operate machinery and slopes, probably the biggest <laughs> yes. thing. Um, but um, we have grass, like, we have other colleges that specialize in different things, but we, because of where we're located, we put a strong focus and grass and machinery. Okay, we got new balers here um, that measure dry matter, and um, we got um, we got access to forage harvesters and um, GPS units. But we tend to put a strong focus on grass and machinery, be it um, low emission slurry spreading, umbilical systems, um, and to tie in with that, we try and um, uh, tie in visits abroad and just make sure, like there's local businesses here doing this sort of equipment. So we try and bring in the visits where we can. Yeah, we, you talked about receding. Look, receding is important across our enterprises to improve the, the quality of our pasture mm. um, and also incorporating clover. And again, we have that ability here. And Yeah, we've actually, uh, we just talked about last week, but just the weather was so dry and we just held off for the minute. But with that rain tonight, um, we probably can get going on that. But we have machines out there. We have a drill out there that can put in clover. We got the disc cultivator. So we have all the equipment here in terms of grassland, be it reseeding, direct drilling, or putting in clover. And the students move on to second year. So they, they, you have an interview for that. There's not yeah, everybody. There's, yeah, there's an interview process after. Once you're successful and do well in level five, we got an interview process where we choose the students then, or based on academic qualifications to get from level five, attendance, um, then we bring them on to a level six course. Okay, yes. So they're, last year we had a really good group of students, very interested. And as Anne said there, like one of the things, like it's not what you learn here, but we want them to enjoy the course and get as much out of it as, as they can. So that's why, look, at, we had a good group of students and we hope to have the same come September. Yeah, and the second years, what's, what's a typical week for them? Um, 
typical week for second year students. So they're in um, four and a half days a week. All right, so the first question I always get asked when the students start is how many days do we have to spend in the classroom? Okay, but look, we try and do as much as we can practically, be it welding, repairs, maintenance, and um, calibrations. But look, at, there's always the theory end of it, as Mary said, get their green cert. So in order to get the green cert, unfortunately then we have exams. Okay, so you're looking at roughly 50% practical and 50% theory. Yeah. Okay, so there's it's a, a good spread. There's a little bit more practical in second year mechanization. Yeah, second year mechanization, then you're probably looking at maybe 60% practical. Yes. Okay, so we try and put as much as we can yes. practically. The dry stock in the dairy would be, Mary, there would be a little bit more management and yeah. farm management. This year we have tried to bring more practicals in. We've looked at drainage and we've also looked at maybe plumbing as well. And um, we did fencing with the students as well, just to get a, a, more elements of um, the practicals. And they were also either mm -hmm. from an environment perspective from yeah. the farm. It was part of the sustainable module, so it was very good for them, and part of the grass module with the drainage. And we also looked at hedgerow rejuvenation with students. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And John, just going back to the, to the machinery operation, the, did you get them any tickets or any qualifications yes. that would be useful for them? Yeah, no, as I said earlier on, John, um, every student, I actually have it at the minute, every student gets their PU number, okay, with the SUDS directive. Anyone yeah, the, applying pesticides in a farm yeah. will need this qualification. So all 12 students that started last September have this qualification now. As well as that, we've done training with a local welding provider. So they have a certificate in welding, okay? Yeah. So all the wells have been certified. Um, as well as that, then obviously to get their green cert. Um, so there is like additional activities that we like to add to the course, just to make the experience more enjoyable and the students get more out of it. Okay, okay, thanks, John. Okay, we're gonna move on to our, our final section in, in tonight's um, one hour session on, on, our, on our college here. And Anne, I'm just gonna come bring you in on this. And that's the whole idea of, of applying. So students have to apply. Some of them watching tonight mightn't have applied or watched in the coming days back when we put this on YouTube and they might be scratching their head wondering, well, how do we actually apply? So it's not linked to the Leaving Cert, just to clarify, we, we've already said that. So students just need to apply. Um, you might just talk that briefly through that. Well, the first thing you need, John, is, a, is access to a computer or a laptop and a good broadband is yep. absolutely necessary. And I believe there's, uh, that's available in local libraries if there's none in your own house. Um, then go to the Chagas website, top right hand corner, apply now, and that will give you the, all the details you need to have and fill, all, fill out all the, the application forms. But before you do that, John, it's always advisable to have a few documents at hand. And it's um, a copy of your birth cert, uh, proof of your PPS number, a photo of your, the front and back of your driving license, if applicable, a medical card, if, if applicable. And if you were born after the 15th of August 2002, you need a signed consent form, signed by a parent or a guardian. So fill all the, 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 the boxes and hit submit, and that's your application submitted. Then along with that, um, you can also indicate whether you need learner support, accommodation here in the college, if necessary. That's, there's a, a box there for both of those. Um, and just a question then, the, the maintenance grant, we don't want to forget that. So that'll be later in the year where information will be given out. It's very important that our students apply for the Chagas maintenance grant. Yes, and that is through the Southwestern, nothing to do with Susie whatsoever. No, that's important, yes. And that application for that is not available until after the 15th of July. Yes. And when, when a student is, has accepted his place and has, has all everything in, in place, he will then be given a link to contact uh, details about the, the maintenance grant. Uh, that is means tested and it covers, well, it will go a good degree to cover the accommodation. Okay, okay. And, and the accommodation, the accommodation, our plan is to open the accommodation. It's it because we talked about the geography, our students, they come from such a, a wide part, the whole northern half of Ireland. That's our plan. It is indeed. And we will have to be led by the directives from the HSE on that. Yes. But certainly we have accommodation for 50. And whilst it's not super duper, 
it's adequate. It's very, very adequate. Yes. It's uh, five nights a week and will cost 70 euros currently. Yes. That covers all bills, power, heat, electricity, Wi-Fi, everything else, nothing extra on that. Food in the canteen is, is extra over and above that. And that would come in at maybe 15 to 18 euros per day. And the canteen is COVID uh, <laughs> compliant, yes. I suppose. Yes. Um, so, yeah. We've already had, uh, we have very good guidelines from, from government, from public health yeah, guidelines. Indeed, yeah. and we've implemented yeah. them here in the college. So I'm glad you mentioned that. So yeah. that's, we don't, we don't know for now, but the plan is The plan, is plan certainly ahead. is to go ahead with the accommodation and be led by HSE guidelines. Okay. Now, Anne, just to move on, uh, your other role in... Valley Hayes is access officer and you've mentioned it a few times so student support so lots of our school leavers will know what that means but student support is about if you need extra help from our staff here uh, and can you give advice on, on yeah, that? Surely um, well any student who has already is, is getting support in a secondary school situation will have that same support here in Valley Hayes and we have a little added extra here in that we have a group of people who come in for uh, exam reading and each student who needs a reader scribe will be allotted one per particular person and we try to, to have continuity with that person and the student throughout the year. So that both the reader and the student get accustomed to each other's ways and I, I think that helps a lot. So for exams, those readers will be in place yes. throughout the year. There is uh, no takers available in the classroom if necessary, if required. There is uh, computer, so our, yeah, computer software available, and we have that installed on our computers. That's there to, throughout the whole year. And um, if a student has any visual impairments, anything like that, they can be accommodated very, very successfully and, here. And the message is to let us know. You said that let in the application, know, yes. that there's an option there to, to clear support. We must know. Uh, the student who's in, in require, require, who requires support, yes. it is very, very advisable for their own benefit to let us know. And as access support. officer over the coming weeks, as you get aware of the people that are applying, that what, what will you do? I will make contact with them by phone initially and um, then progress to a Zoom meeting. It'll be a very informal meeting. We'll just have a chat and uh, focus on what the student can do rather than what they can't do yes and draw up some sort of a learning plan to suit their their abilities and and maybe it'll throw it back to john and mary mm -hmm. like the student support it is very important to to many of our students yeah. and they do appreciate it on, on the dry it, stock it's hugely important john and i think Anne's touched on a very good point there that the, the the student almost builds a relationship with the support person and they have that that confidence in that person that's there to help and support them and I think it's also worth noting that even though in the last few weeks we've been working remotely with our students, that support has continued. It has, yeah. And likewise in the yeah. mechanisation course. Yeah, just like that too, John, it's good to mention that like on the mechanisation course I get a lot of students. It's very good practically, but they can struggle with exams. And I know we've marked a lot of exams in the last two or three months. And it's amazing how they have progressed during the year. And as compliments to Anne, she's done a really good job. But it's amazing, like from the coming in September to they finish, say, in May. They, like, the, the progression is really remarkable. So, John, on that note, I often remark about the students here, and I've often said it to them at, 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 at various points. John, they come in here as young, gangly students, youngsters, mm -hmm. but they leave as mature men mm -hmm. and, and ladies. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay, the um, question here um, is what date do we find out when we're accepted? So that's an easy one. So. Uh, the admin team in the office every couple of weeks will process applications and, and you'll get an offer straight away so that you don't have to wait to apply and when the applications are processed and all the documents are validated, you will get your offer. Um, so, and just again, going back to the, the, the students, the, the difference for them coming in this year, um, like how do you think or what do you think what we will do? I suppose talking to them is what you... Talk to them, yeah. yes, very much talk to them. And always continuously try to talk to them and reassure them that we'll be as normal as we can be. Um, that's whatever normal might be from now on. But yes, whatever has been there in the past 
we will continue to try to, to supply the same thing in a different format, maybe. Yeah. But from what I hear, um, there hasn't been an, a decrease in, in any kind of numbers in applicants. No. So um, I certainly am looking forward to a new, uh, a, a good batch of students going in. And whatever was going on in former years, we will try to stick to it as close as possible to, to the same format for this year. Okay. So we'll finish up shortly. And again, please ask any questions uh, before we finish up. John, I suppose if somebody's thinking about applying for Agriculture College and machinery is their interest, again, what advice would you give them uh, at this point? They're trying to make their mind up about what to do. Well, it is a popular course, John, approved popular last year. So I'd advise them to get their application in for level five as quickly as possible. Okay. During level five, then put in a good effort, be here every day, demonstrate your interest in machinery, do your best you can on it, and then coming towards maybe midway, midway through level five, get the application in for your mechanization course. Okay, but the big thing is to apply early. Don't leave it too late. Yeah, okay. And Mary, again, the similar question for the dry stock, the dairy students, that, 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 that's their area of interest. Yeah, again, coming into level five, moving on to level six, what should they be? Yeah, definitely, we'd be saying to them to, you know, to take their time in their decision, first of all that you know don't be swayed by all these fancy tractors and <laughs> but to when they have their mind made up and, and I think the, the one thing about the teaching staff here and, and indeed Anne and the other staff is that you know we're very open to chatting with students on a one-to-one -one basis about their careers and that we can offer them advice as to what what would what would work for them and following that then to just to get their application in for the second year. Yes, and mm -hmm. level five in the first instance too. Absolutely, to level five, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. for the level mm -hmm. five course. So that's, um, if there's any other questions, um, um, and if we have any comments before we finish up, I, I would just like to say the final words. I just thank you, first of all, Mary, um, John, and Dr. John on the dairy. Um, it's been really grateful that we've had a conversation today uh, to show that, that the show is, is still going on here, that the college is open for business, and that we're very keen for, for potential applicants to, to apply for our programs. As I said, I'd like to mention a few things to reiterate them. If we're passionate about agriculture here, everyone is the same. And you'll certainly feel that when you come to Ballyhays from, from both the staff here and your classmates on our programs. We've also got the farm that you've seen on the videos here, a very, very substantial farm uh, that we're bringing in best production practice that we have sustainably managing those enterprises to protect our environment, to manage our, our carbon footprint. And those two things, I would like to think, will make it very, very valuable for you if you decide to come to Valley Hayes. Uh, I'd like to thank you for your attention tonight. Uh, if there's any other questions that I didn't get to tonight, we will answer those and publish those in the coming days on our website. This recording is also on YouTube. We'll put that up tomorrow. So if you have some friends that you think would have gained from seeing this, there'll be a YouTube link that'll be on our website. Please share that with those students. Uh, I'm sure they'd be delighted to watch it back and hopefully we've answered any of the questions that they might have. And most importantly, we're looking forward to you coming here in September. Thank you. Mm -hmm.